Welcome to another episode of Jaylon's Garage. Today's car, pretty outlandish, 1990 Lamborghini LM002. Uh, about 25, 30 years ago, this was just about the craziest thing on the road. Uh, there's a sort of tortured history to this car. As I remember it back in the 70s, there was a company that was going to build some kind of off-road vehicle uh, with, with Chrysler. I think it was called the Cheetah, something of that nature. And then the Lamb uh, Lamborghini got bought by Chrysler. And I think this was part of the whole deal. And they put the <laughs> Lamborghini Countach motor in this four-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, you know, it's so funny. This seems so huge back in the mid-80s when it first came out. Now, a lot of SUVs are this size. It actually seems kind of normal. But back in the day, there was nothing faster or crazier than this car. Now, this car, being a Lamborghini, as all good Lamborghinis are, serviced by Franco's European Sports. Can you remember Franco? He and his son Damien came here with the Diablo. Here it is. There you are. OK. Well, Damien is here, and he's been servicing this. Damien, come on in. Damiano is actually the name, isn't it? But yes. Damien works. We'll make it American, Damien. <laughs> How's Franco? Good? He's good. Okay. He's good, you know. So you've been servicing this car for a while? Yes. He's been our customer for a few years now, okay. ever since he bought it. Now, did I get that right? I think that Chrysler uh, had a contract to build some kind of military vehicle, right? Yeah, it's kind of a lot of weirdness going on, but it was... Um, Originally, it was the 70s, late 70s, I think it was right. around 77. Um, it was, uh, in San Jose, actually, it was a, a military company. Mobility something or other, as I remember. Yeah, I think it's MTI was the name of it. Yeah, and they were going to use a Chrysler engine. Yeah, Chrysler V8 mid-mounted. Right. And it was, uh, it was called the Cheetah. Right. And it's, uh, I mean, it's, it was pretty insane at the time, but then they had problems because they were, uh, 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 it was legal problems with another company making the Hummer. Right. And uh, but they so wanted, they, yeah, they want something fast that could cover r r rugged desert terrain. Right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And um, I'm not sure why they chose Lamborghini or try to partner with them. I guess maybe because of the, uh, their background with tractors and maybe well, off-road equipment. I assume that. I, I know that Lamborghini got bought by Chrysler. And at the time, they were bought by some ridiculous amount of money, like $20 million for the whole company. Oh, yeah. So I think they needed to provide jobs. So they thought, why don't we have them build it? We'll put the Lamborghini engine in it. I mean, the idea of a Lamborghini engine in an Army vehicle, I mean, you got some 18-year-old, <laughs> you know, volunteer. Johnson, come over here. Field strip that, uh, that Lamborghini Countach engine. Oh, yeah. There's some sand in the Webers. Get that out of there before we attack. <laughs> I mean, it just seemed like the craziest thing, but... These were huge in Saudi Arabia, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, they bring back the car because they realized there was a market mm. for the Saudis and yeah. anybody who wanted like sort of uh, any type of military vehicle running through the sand to do any type of insane things that they like to do. Or and it had 400 and what, 55 horsepower? Yeah, I think it started like 420, then it was 450 yeah. horsepower when they went to now, fuel injection. Now back in the 80s, there was. A Ferrari only had 220 horsepower. You have to put it in perspective. Now we see cars at six, seven, eight, nine hundred horsepower. But back in the day, this was probably the most powerful engine in any vehicle for sale to the public. Oh, about, wasn't yeah, it? pretty yeah. much. I mean, it, it was pretty insane, as insane as it gets. I yeah, mean, it's, yeah, yeah. and it really they they went all out. I mean, if yeah. you see the suspension and the uh, and the framework on this, it's. I mean, you could hit a dump truck and you're walking away for sure. Yeah, I go, yeah, the dump truck's not. No. <laughs> yeah, I remember Malcolm Forbes bought one, and a lot of movie stars had them, and it just yeah. became one of those things, you know, rich guys had to have. It's hilarious. And these tires, these tires are made specifically for the car. Now, these, God, these are in good shape. This is an original set, aren't they? It is an original set because whatever that run of tires was, it was. Yeah. And these tires are how much a piece? Now, the... The new version, they're forty-three hundred dollars. Forty-three hundred dollars a tire. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy, and you don't get the Kevlar lining like this has. Yeah. Oh no, that's extra. No. What do you want for forty-three hundred bucks? Uh, yeah, come, come on. on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I remember these were about what eighty, a hundred thousand dollars new. Something? It was one hundred twenty. One hundred twenty, which was yeah. again a lot of money. A lot of money back then. Okay. Okay, and it's uh, all aluminum or steel. Uh, steel. Steel. Steel, steel, steel with some okay. um, stainless, some, it, it's a mix of alloys, but... Uh, the coolest thing is manual shift. Oh, yeah, it's manual. Yeah, I mean, I don't know any vehicle like this, you know, Hummers, I don't think you can get a standard shift in those things. I no. couldn't tell you. Um, can we open the hood? Let's see what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. 
What's awesome about this too is you can pop it into a, a like lower gearing, right. almost like halftime gearing. Yeah. And I mean, it gives you super amount of torque. If yeah. And you had to get out and change the hubs by hand, right? If you wanted a four wheel drive, you have to lock them. Yeah, you got to lock them manually. Yeah. yeah. But that was not a big deal back in the day because most hubs you had to lock manually. Yeah, it was. It was. It was part of the part of the fun. Okay, that's all right. That's the cool part. Okay, you see the big <laughs> Lamborghini. It just looks so ridiculous in this application. And it is. <laughs> But by Italian standards, that's a big motor. How many liter? Five? It's 5.2. 5 5.2. 5 it, it was the Countach engine. I mean, really. Right. The, this actually, the newer version had the Diablo block, but it still had a Countach crank. So it was it's a quattro valve? Yes, okay. quattro valve. So four valve, and it obviously didn't have the, the Countach transmission. It has a more traditional, right? Yeah, ZF made the transmission, right. but it is one of the gnarliest four-wheel drives. I mean, if you take a look underneath, it is... Complete overkill. Yeah, I couldn't imagine breaking a gear in this. Yeah, uh, it's it's and this is one of the better ones I've seen. This one looks like it's been nicely restored, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean he, he he's been customers very meticulous about the okay. car and loves it. Absolutely yeah. loves the car. Well, you wouldn't want to scratch it, you know, being an <laughs> off-road vehicle. No, you don't want no. to get a scratch on it. Well, just forty-three hundred bucks for tires. I, 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 just hilarious. Well, let's let's show us around the vehicle a little bit. Sure, more. sure. Let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> Is that shut? There, we go. there you go. Okay, and this is just a big cow catcher or a bumper. Over there. Yeah, this was actually, um, you see they have some holes here. They yeah. did have a placement for a winch. Oh, okay. And it has winch oh, controls right. inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, just in case you need to pull your other Lambo out of the ditch. Yeah, because your other every Lambo gets stuck, you go down with this Lambo and pull that <laughs> Lambo out of the ditch. All right, very good. Uh, these are all stock? These yeah, these vents are stock, believe it or not. The mirrors are not stock. And you realize that the Hummer just kind of copied this, didn't they, a little bit? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, I think, a question of what happened at the time, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it seats four, and it's, it's got air conditioning and everything, right? Yeah, it has air conditioning. It's, uh, I would say it seats four decently, yeah. a decent amount of comfort. Yeah. Let's take a look at the back of the vehicle. Does this open up, this tailgate? Yeah, it pops down, and uh, I can show you right now if you want. Okay. Very easy. Oh, I see. Okay. Did the seats used to be back here too? Yeah, they're supposed to be leather seats on both sides, but um, yeah. but he put a bike rack back here for okay. you know. Yeah. More well, practical. Fun. Yeah. I'm gonna get too Honey, crazy. we can carry the bikes when we go <laughs> bike riding. Yeah, how else? Yeah. Or if you break down, you could jump on your bike, right? Yeah, and this is all boilerplate. That's all original, isn't it? Yes. It's on there, okay. And what's what's here? Here's the gas tank, okay. which is what's great about the American LMs because the uh, carbureted versions and some of the Europeans had the, the rear seats were the gas tank. Oh, I see. And the car would always smell like gas. Okay, the rear seats were the gas tanks. What could go wrong there, yeah. huh? <laughs> yes. Especially if you're attacked, the rear seats, the gas tank. All right, very good. You got a heated rear window, which of course in Saudi Arabia you have to have. Yeah, you never know, right? You know, you have for those to have cool that, nights. For that odd wind that comes in. All right, and then this just close, and then your spare tire is right there. Yeah, and it's, and it's a real yeah. wheel and tire. Yeah. Full size. Yeah, it's not one of those little weenie. Uh... Cool. Let's see. Well, let's, let's open up the door on that side and see sure, what it looks sure. like. Oh, go ahead. I mean, was... All leather? Yes. Yeah, that's what the Army needs. The Army's got to have the optional leather interior. Yeah, well, you know. How does it work? Yeah. How, how dare you travel any other way? I mean, it is a beautiful interior. I mean, it's nicely done. I mean, it's all leather everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's all, all Italian leather. They, they went for it. We, it usually has actually wood trim. Right. We ended up putting carbon fiber because okay. yeah. that's right. where our customer wanted. But, uh, it's yeah. but I do love that manual gear. Five speed? Yeah. Five five speed. And it's, it's, it's beautiful, actually. It works yeah. very well. All right. Can we take it for a ride? Of course. Let's do it. Yeah, I remember this series, they used to call it the Rambo Lambo. Yeah, because, Rambo Lambo. Because the Rambo movies were popular. It just, just doesn't sound like any SUV I've ever heard. <laughs> That's one of the better sounding Countach motors. So it's a quattro valve fuel injected, right? Yeah, it's a quattro valve with the batch fire injection that they have on the Diablo, the early Diablos. And, uh, I remember when I got my Countach, I wanted it because it was the last carbureted car in America. 
and I want a carburetor, there's no oh. fuel, not oh, that yeah. fancy fuel injection yeah. stuff. She drives great. You got a big panoramic windscreen. I mean, I figured it would it would feel like a truck, but it's actually okay. Some of these tires are what 30 years old, pretty much. Yeah. And the thing about the is they have that really hard sidewall because it has that sand lip. Right, right. But what it does is it doesn't allow a lot of uh, wheel roll, tire right. roll. So yeah. it's actually handles pretty well at high speeds. And what kind of mileage does this get? <laughs> well, I, I think. Uh, if you're really kind to it, probably doing 60 on the freeway, you might get 12. Wow. And how uh, many gallon tank? The tank, they had a couple different tanks between 50 and 77 gallons. 77 gallons. So they were, if you needed to go far, you could go. You better stop at the bank on the way though. <laughs> yes. It's just so funny, a military vehicle that's bright red. Oh yeah. It's to strike fear in the hearts. I know, you feel like Captain Nemo sitting up here in this thing. I can remember years ago in the 80s, people would show up at MTV uh, award shows with these things, you know, oh. and give it to the valet. And <laughs> look, there's a guy taking a picture right in front of us. Yeah. It's a like a Lambo, huh? And it's got the steering wheel out of the Countach, doesn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's a it's a little tight on the you can see yeah, on the could, dashboard. Yeah, it could wrap your knuckles, yeah. Yeah, if you have a lot of rings, it's gonna be rough. It does make you laugh. It's ridiculous and awesome. Yeah, you could go out to Mojave with it, but I guess nobody does. Four-wheel disc, right? It is not. Oh, it is not? What is it? Well, it has dual calipers in the front. Right, so disc in front. Yeah, which actually worked pretty well. Yeah. And then um, in the back is actually drum, huge drums. Big drums, okay. Yeah, like huge 12-inch drums back there. And then we put steel braided brake lines to give the brakes a little. I wonder why they ran drums since Lambos were, uh, there's never a Lamborghini produced with drums, so it's not like they had drums left over, you know? I, you know, I, I'm not sure why they did. I, I, I'm thinking that maybe had some kind of uh, off-road appeal. Yeah. Some more reliability issues. Something, yeah, that makes sense. It's just such a funny combination. They're one of the most powerful sports car engines of all time. And you stick it in a four-wheel drive desert vehicle. <laughs> yes. Corner's nice and flat, look at that. No body roll. But it does like to rev, just like a Lamborghini. Yeah, it wants you to wind it out, you know? Yeah, yeah. Flying over the desert sand at 70 miles an hour in this thing. It's got Italian air conditioning. You turn on the air conditioner, then you open the windows. <laughs> I don't know why the Italians can't get air conditioning down. I you know, it's just kind of... <laughs> it just always made me laugh. Like, even my Countach, got two little vents in the middle. How much effort is it to put an extra hose on each side just to blow some cold air out? I, I think they were already, you're lucky enough to get what you got. That's how they're thinking. Yeah, yeah, you're lucky you got that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm sure you know this. There was a law in America that any luxury vehicle over $30,000 had to pay a 5% luxury tax. Oh, yes, yes. But trucks and other commercial vehicles didn't have to pay it. So to get around the tax, a lot of companies built luxury trucks. Makes sense. So you save 5% of the purchase price. And I think this was part of that because there was no luxury tax on this because it was considered a workhorse type vehicle. Yeah, yeah utility. That was really the birth of the SUV in America as we know it. Because pickup trucks in the 60s and early 70s used to just be pickup trucks, maybe yeah. an AM radio, that was about it. Then after that law went through, they got leather interior, air conditioning, you know, all the fancy stuff. That sounds great. Oh yeah. 
perfect for picking up the kids at soccer practice or yeah, you know, groceries. Running down to the groceries, sixty or seventy dollars worth of gas to run down to get some groceries. <laughs> This thing is hysterical. You know, it's got the heart of a lion. It's like we just saying. It's like a, a big fat guy who used to be an athlete. You know, he's still got the soul of the athlete, the heart of the athlete. He's just a big fat guy now, and he's not quite as fast as he used to be. But by golly, when when he wants to, he gets it. I mean, I don't know if you, if it's coming through on this video, but it just sounds fantastic. But it's it's six thousand more than six thousand yeah. pounds probably with fifty gallons of gasoline and everything else in it. It's certainly a lot of fun. I, 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 it drives way better than I thought it would. Yeah, it's, it's a little shocking how yeah, well it handles. Yeah, it's got power steering. This is actually a sensible vehicle, honey. Really, you could <laughs> take the kids to soccer and you'd be well protected. And yeah, got a big giant heavy clutch so your leg would get a good workout. Fantastic. I like this clock. You said it was a $10,000 option? Yeah, <laughs> Brigitte for, uh, on the Diablo, so I guess yeah, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you gotta have that. I mean, you gotta spring for the ten thousand dollar little clock. The trouble is, this thing revs so much we can't really get out of second gear. Let's take it up on the freeway, drop it in fifth, and just see how it cruises. I've always wanted to drive one of these things. I drove one years and years ago, but uh, not this good. Everything the Franco boys touch just just runs beautifully. That's Franco's European.com. That's the website, yes, right? Yes, yes. You. you remember that Diablo? This one runs great. Nice job, guys. Say hi to your dad for me. Absolutely. Thanks so much. The next generation. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>